So here we are at CompTIA's Mobility Plus. So what we're going to be talking about, this is, this is a general outline, okay? And so I have five chapters, and with five chapters being said, that is going to be a general outline of the, of the program. So first we're going to be talking about over-the-air technologies. And one of the things I like about CompTIA's Mobility Plus is you get to learn about cellular technologies too. Um, this is different from whenever I teach Cisco courses. I, I, I teach a lot of Cisco wireless. So um, with, that, you know, with that being said, we don't really talk so much about the cellular aspect of, of the wireless, but we do in here, so that's a good thing. Um, and again, I did want to reiterate, you will see me use Cisco icons sometimes and, and also uh, uh, talk about Cisco products because that's kind of my forte. And, and knowing you know, the mobility course is vendor neutral. So I'm not in any way trying to promote Cisco or Cisco technologies. It's just the products I use. And throughout the class, you have to use a product to demonstrate, you know, the access points and the controllers and all that kind of stuff. So that's the products I have readily available as well. So anyway, that's, I just wanted to kind of put that out there in the beginning so, so you understood that. I think most of you would, would think that to be a, a very beneficial thing since... Um, a lot of you may end up working with Cisco Technologies and also may be pursuing Cisco certification as well. So um, anyway, um, with that being said, over-the-air technologies is going to be our first topic and first chapter, and we got a lot to that. Then we're going to be talking about network infrastructure. Mobile device management will be chapter three. Security will be chapter four, and five will be troubleshooting. So with that being said, this follows the outline of the Mobility Plus um, certification uh, 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 content provided by CompTIA. I will be throwing things kind of in there um, from that I've just developed that I want you to know, I want you to understand that's going to be beneficial for you on the certification, but also in the real world whenever it comes to managing wireless LANs. So with that being said, let's start talking about over-the-air technologies. So over-the-air technologies, our goals are going to be to compare and contrast the different cellular technologies that are out there. So we're going to be talking about cellular at first. This is a good thing because I don't often get to talk uh, about cellular technology. So I, I enjoy it whenever I get to, to teach something different, right? Um, so configure and implement Wi-Fi client technologies using the appropriate options. We're going to be talking about that. Also compare and contrast RF principles and their functionality. That is such a fun topic. I know you're going to enjoy uh, uh, the RF conversation of wireless. It is so cool to see how these things work uh, you know, through RF. It's, it's, it's a great thing. And interpret site surveys to ensure over-the-air communication. So um, the evolution of cellular. That's where we're going to be starting. So how many of you guys had, had one of these uh, Motorola flip phones like this? This was by far the most common cell phone for such a long time. I mean, in, before this phone, uh, the cell phones were big and bulky, and, you know, they used to say, well, it's a mobile phone, but if you put it in your pocket, you needed to get, like, bigger jeans because it was so big and bulky, right? I mean, it, it was, it, everybody knew you had a phone. If somebody said, hey, can I use your phone? You'd be like, uh, I don't have a phone. They're like, well, I can see, you know, a big rock in your pocket, so that's, that's a phone, you know? So, anyway, but but yeah, so, so some of the frequencies that are used by uh, cellular technology was operated in the 300 to 3,000 megahertz frequency range. And so we're going to talk about what the frequencies mean and what the megahertz mean in its, in its own section. But that's basically the portion that, that cellular was working with. And it's also one of the reasons we get the long distances that cellular uh, RF can travel. Okay, um, So a band is really a frequency range and channels are smaller uh, frequency ranges within a band. So we're going to talk about the bands and all that kind of stuff. Do not worry. A cell is a coverage area. So it, whenever you have a radio of any kind, let's say you have a, a you know, tower here. A cell is going to be the coverage area to where that tower can provide RF. So we'll just say like that's its coverage area, right? And each cell typically uh, covers about 10 square miles. So you should see a radio tower every, about every 10 miles. Nowadays, you see them much, much more than that, right? Um, so, and then they overlap, too. And we're going to talk about this. But they'll overlap so that they can, uh, you get seamless roaming between them, right? All right. 
so uh, frequencies are reused in non-adjacent cells, so we're going to be talking about that as well. And we've had this evolution of cellular. So from 1G, that was like the uh, AMPS, that was the advanced uh, mobile phone system. We, at 2G, we had TDMA, which is time division, multiple access. And you guys might be familiar with another time of uh, uh, TD, TDMA, which is time division. Uh, well, it's time division, multiple access, right? Or time division, multiplexing. So we'll, we'll talk about that uh, type of technology. Uh, we've, 2G was a big thing whenever it came out, and that's where most of us got our first cell phones and things, right, was the 1G and 2G days. And then whenever 3G came out with CDMA, um, which is code division multiplexing or multiple access, uh, you know, that's, uh, that, that was such a big deal. We thought that was like blazing fast speeds. And then, of course, now we're on the 4G um, LTE, long-term evolution. So CDMA was the most popular 3G uh, cell system in the U.S., and it used a EVDO, uh, which is the Evolution Data Optimized, uh, doesn't allow simultaneous voice and data in the U.S. So you get uh, uh, three uh, megabits or one megabit speed, and that was blazing fast at the time, right? We were like, we got T1 speeds on our cell phone. How cool is that? Well, you know, that's uh, uh, pretty cool, right? So, and they're carrier-locked phones. So whenever you use a phone with one carrier, you need to, you know, they're, they lock them to that carrier, because in the U.S., they like to subsidize things. And so what they would do is sell you a cell phone that costs $500 for 99 bucks, and then subsidize the rest over your contract, right? So, um, so they locked them to each carrier. But each phone, until it was sold to that carrier and locked, you know, should have been able to work with any carrier. And that's the whole process of unlocking phones, right? And today, they lock them down so much that if you do unlock phones or jailbreak, you know, is the term, uh, you might have functionality with one carrier that you don't have with another. Um, for instance, my brother recently bought a phone that, you know, he broke his phone and didn't have insurance. And so he went and bought this phone, and it was unlocked. It was unlocked. He put the SIM in, made a call. It worked. But then he took it to his carrier, and, the, you know, the wireless over that didn't work. And so, but it was officially unlocked. We checked it out. It, you know, it was the, the same unlock everybody was using, but they have these different ways of locking it down. So just because calls work doesn't mean the other features will work. And that's uh, something you got to watch out for with that. So GSM, GSM has long been the, the, the standard for wireless technologies, and it's a global system for mobile communication. It was developed by the European Telecommunication Standard Institute. It's the uh, de facto global cellular standard. The phones are not carrier locked and uh, support simultaneous voice and data. GSM world phone support for uh, all four common GSM frequencies, uh, 850 megahertz to 900 megahertz and 1800 megahertz to 1900 megahertz. We're going to talk about what those are and what those mean in a moment. Then you have what's called the GPRS, that's the General Packet Radio Service. It's a data service that's uh, available to users of GSM and is IS-136 handsets. And so uh, to increase the data transmission rate and improve network uh, capacity, EDGE, or Enhanced Data for GSM Evolution, was introduced. And so you get these, uh, these blocks here. These are like cells. So you can see a, a cell here that's in Rockville. And you can see this is a highway that's going between it, an Interstate 270 that's going between uh, Maryland and uh, Virginia, right? And so that's an example of GSM cells and, and coverage areas. And so whenever you would go outside of this particular area, area in, in uh, Maryland, that would be roaming once you hit the, the Vienna cell. Why? Because it went from the Maryland uh, uh, GSM uh, centralized switch to the Virginia switch. Okay, so that's an example of roaming. Then you also have this concept of a home location registrar, and that keeps track of who's from where and all that stuff. And so originally in the cellular days, you used to get billed for that, right? If you went from, from one side of the network to the other or from one carrier's network to the other, and sometimes this isn't all owned by the same carrier, right? Sometimes it's owned by different carriers, and so then that's another form of roaming. So... Uh, that, that evolution has evolved. This is the official GSM logo um, for that technology, right? Then we had TDMA, which is a, a time division multiple access and is a channel access method for uh, shared medium networks. So basically, it's, it's ways that you can 
channelize the medium and allow people to access different channels. It allows several users to share the same frequency channel by dividing the signal into different time slots. And so if you guys are familiar with TDM, time division multiplexing, uh, that's a way that we use with uh, uh, internet T1s and, and voice PRIs and all that kind of stuff. And so I'll talk about multiplexing as we go forward. But it has to do with carving up a single uh, device or a single medium, wired or wireless, and allow multiple users to access it. Okay, And so uh, the users uh, transmit in rapid succession, one after the other, each using its own uh, time slot and allow multiple stations to share the same transmission medium, uh, like uh, the radio frequency channel, while using only part of its uh, channel capacity. And TDMA is used in the digital uh, uh, 2G cellular system, such as uh, uh, GSM, and uh, also the ISI36, that's personal digital cellular, and IDIN, uh, the, the digital enhanced cordless telecommunication standard for portable phones. Then we have a concept of something called WiMAX. And WiMAX is a technology for long-range wireless communication. And it uh, stands for, and you know what? I think for now, we're going we're gonna to end with TDMA. I'm going to take a short break, and I'm going to come back to WiMAX because i got a lot to say about it. Be right back. <laughs> 